Robin Hood Radio presents Stage Right or Not with Michelle Willems. Michelle is a longtime journalist and herself is a published playwright of several theatrical works. She's a frequent contributor to the Huffington Post, Daily Beast, and the Atlantic websites. Another hope of another show. Yes, here we go again, talking about theater when there is none. Well, none that is of the live variety. But things keep happening in this ever creative community. First, a bit of news. The business of online theater-based offerings came to a sort of happy conclusion this past week with Actors Equity and the Screen Actors Guild compromising on how streamed theater works and those performing in them will be compensated. This is inside baseball, so to speak, but the good news is we will continue to see some of theater's best actors up close and live as well as plays and productions from the company's archives on our small screens. Speaking of baseball, I watched the discussion with director Scott Ellis and a few of his cast members of Take Me Out. That's Richard Greenberg's play about a gay player's painful coming out. It was to be on stage now in a revival from the Second Stage Theater. Well, they discussed what turned out to be their brief rehearsal process, important for a cast that was not familiar with the actual sport their roles were all about. So Ellis had the cast spend several days together first with the goal, he says, of, quote, really making them feel like a team by the time we sat down to focus on the words. About this long and unexpected intermission, one of the stars, Jesse Tyler Ferguson, said... Well, it has forced people to be creative in how they get their art out. Another conversation I streamed was from the Signature Theater with three playwrights who had and have plays scheduled for whenever that complex reopens. Samuel Hunter, Annie Baker, and Brandon Jacobs Jenkins, all very hot youngish writers. The themes, not surprisingly, are diversity and inclusivity. Hunter's play is called The Existence of God, a rather large subject, it seems, but he said he employs what he calls an intimate and tight lens to look at big ideas. Jenkins is writing a two-hander called Grass about, he says, a mother and son road trip narrated by a man named History. Annie Baker's work is called The Uses of Pain for Life, which she says is about suffering and about women over 40. I guess those are two separate things. The playwrights also talk about the challenges they've faced at this time and some of the surprising things they've discovered. Hunter said he was inspired by spending so much time with his three-year-old daughter and that he did not mind being forced to slow down. Baker said, I feel more fiercely devoted to New York than ever before. For anyone interested in the writing process, this one can be found via Signature's site. The final conversation I watched was my favorite weekly one hosted by artistic director John Doyle for the Classic Stage Company. This one was with Hilton Owls, who has stepped down from his job as theater reporter for The New Yorker. Interestingly, both are professors at Princeton. Now, why did Howells leave his powerful perch? Sometimes critics stay in their jobs too long, he says. When you're scraping the bottom to find sincerity, it's time to go. But he says he loved Doyle's work in particular. It was always a joy to go to the theater and not know what I was going to see, he confessed. I was groaning when I had to go see The Color Purple, which Doyle directed, and says I was in tears when it was over. Doyle himself said his work is about minimizing, even if it means having the actors play the instruments. I love the process of stripping away the artifice, he says. Well, amen to all that good talk and exhibiting a great deal of false hope these days. The Manhattan Theater Club, for example, just announced that it will not be debuting its first production until the fall of 2021. And its revival of How I Learned to Drive, which would have been well into its run by now, is not scheduled until spring of 2022. The only real event I managed to watch this past week was Hershey Felder's latest one-man musical bio called Claude de Bousset, A Paris Love Story. This is not one of Felder's best, but speaking for myself, I could probably listen to Claire de Lune a lot before tiring of it. Here we learn that the composer was considered by many a genius at a very young age, though a guy named Tchaikovsky said he had no talent whatsoever. What's most compelling is how de, de Boussier, whatever his name, however you pronounce it, 
composed, how he composed. One song was to give the feeling of layers of water, he explains, and it actually does. This one is watchable for another week at least on various outlets. As for what's coming up, well, it's a holiday week, so not much new unless you want to try to get a ticket for the new one at the Geffen Statehouse, as it's not now called. That's based in Los Angeles. Its new one is called Citizen Detective. It's the latest of what might be called gimmicky, immersive theater. The Geffen's last two were filled with illusionist and then puzzle-style games with small participating audiences. Theater Works Hartford, that's up in Connecticut, obviously, is reviving the who and the what. Ayad Akhtar's follow-up to his Pulitzer Prize-winning Disgrace. It's a probe of the challenges Muslim women face, and that's up through November 28th through the Hartford twhartford.org. Lessons in Survival is finishing its month, months-long run, and it's worth streaming. Here, fine actors read the words of largely African-American wordsmiths of the past. And Neil LaBoot's rather star-studded take on Uncle Vanya is only up through tonight, I'm afraid, on broadwaysbest.com. And if you have a few minutes here or there and want to feel smarter, go to YouTube or Theater for a New Audience's site, to catch a few episodes of Dakin Matthews sheltering with Shakespeare. I know I've talked about this before, but I do like it. One I watched this week was about regicide. I think that's how you pronounce it, or regicide. You may know what that word means. I did not. Well, it refers to the killing of kings. Fourteen of Shakespeare's plays, explains Matthews, have dealt with this in some form, be it murder by weapon, being haunted by ghosts, or poison. You always pick up fun nuggets listening to Dakin Matthews' short teachings. He is the go-to man for actors about to perform the Bard's work. For example, who knew Shakespeare wrote Richard III and IV and later went back to write Richard I? I admit I got a little lost in all the Richards at Henry's here. And I did not know where the term the War of the Roses came from. Well, I do now. Well, I did a few days ago, so don't test me. Finally, we always look for silver linings. Well, probably the silveriest is, is, is that anyone from anywhere can enjoy theater. Not live, of course, but the hope is that streaming plays and such might whet appetites for live when it comes back. This week's Los Angeles Times, for example, suggested various things for its readers to stream. One was Hershey Felder's in Florence, another Bill Irwin's take on Beckett from New York's Irish rep. The other was the aforementioned Uncle Vanya. So, Jill, we'll take whatever we can get, won't we? We certainly will. And from an educational standpoint, uh, we'll give uh, give you extra points. Thank you. I could use all the extra credit I could get. (laughs) Uh, No, and I think that other people are are very uh, happy to learn as well. Are you um, hearing anything about... uh, is, 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 is there any uh, are, are there any stirrings that you're hearing about? No, not a one. It's it feels very very a very very down period right now. I, I, what I'm feeling is the opposite. You know the the awakenings, the awful awakenings. And you know what? This ain't going back till next fall. You know all those spring things they talked about. We'll see. The music man is still scheduled for spring, but um, it doesn't feel like a very um, you know happening thing right now i mean i hate to say it and in the middle obviously we're in the middle of a, a very bad moment right now with the virus but who knows if when things start getting better uh, you know the big question we always talk about isn't so much when they can get their act together is when people are going to want to get dressed take off their mask or keep the mask on whatever and go to a crowded theater you know with they hope good ventilation so you know it's a it's a two-pronged <laughs> question here. So what I'm wondering is, have you noticed how many people are flying? Very few. Uh, I just made my reservation yesterday for oh. my next one, January, and everybody says, oh, that'll never happen. Uh, well, yes, it will, because I want to go out west, and once I get out there, I stay for a long time. I mean, I guess if you're desperate enough, you will do it. Um, well, as it, as it happens, and the only reason I'm mentioning this is because you don't... I, I'm... It, we're, we're, we're recording this the uh, Monday before, prior to Thanksgiving, and a lot of people actually have traveled for Thanksgiving. Air traffic, you know, lots they of. They say they're saying that so far. Yeah, so far they have a lot of reservations. 
And so, uh, and, 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 you know, it's, and so forth. There's the, the video from different airports and whatnot. And I think, uh, I mean, yeah. the the number, at least as of this morning, was uh, March like pre pre March Mar- March levels of travel. That's so interesting. Yeah, in my own family out out west, uh, they've canceled all theirs. Right, um, and they were relatively short flight, all been canceled. So I, I, I guess you know people but, when they make up mind. So I so I'm just, I, you know I just I I always wonder when there are there as activity. It sounds yeah. like that, you know, whether or not yeah. at some point. Also, there are certain films I know that are opening, you know, only in theaters. So I, I just, yeah. that's why I was asking whether there's any. Yeah, uh, they're opening the theaters. They're not doing well at all. They're making minuscule sure. m- amount of dollars. If. And they've already negotiated how long they have to stay in a theater to to then be allowed to go to streaming. So that's all been negotiated. And they now can. I think only need to play three weeks uh, at the most. It used to be like three months before you went from the big screen to the large. So that's all been negotiated. Um, so everything's in negotiation, um, <laughs> as we say. And yeah, the airplane thing is, is an interesting one that so many people, I guess, consider going to a family reunion more important, you know, than any risks they take and what they might you know, who they might be seeing when they get on the other end. Stage Right or Not with Michelle Willens, produced in the studios of Robin Hood Radio, robinhoodradio.com.